topic of the day, are you pissed off enough to change? Uh, I want to give you a little context for this conversation because this conversation started over this last weekend in Austin. Now, I was very happy to be asked to join a guided mastermind led by Candy Barone from You Empowered Strong and James Wober from The Art of Living Heartfully. And they led a very deep soul mastermind for people who want to get deeper into the conversation about leadership. So we had folks from corporate and folks from um, the worlds of art and folks from uh, the worlds of internet marketing and entrepreneurialism. And it was a really intimate and wonderful group. And one of the things that came up in conversation, because we were talking about having courageous conversations, as Candy calls them, con courageous connected conversations, uh, was this whole idea of, well, why did you start what you're doing? And many of us in the room, if not all of us to one extent or another, were pissed off about something. And that kind of, let's call it righteous indignation, was one of the pieces of momentum that pushed us to actually get what we wanted to do started. Um, so isn't that interesting? So that is the question that I'm posing today because we often shy away from anger as a motivating force, but it can be tremendously motivating. Anger gets a lot of stuff done. It starts movements, it starts protests, it starts all kinds of things. It starts businesses, it starts relationships. The only thing we have to take in consideration is how long does that anger last? What's underneath it that is motivating us? Um, and, and so that's really what we want to take a look at here today. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I have a special place in my heart for righteous indignation. Uh, because I'm so good at it and <laughs> anybody else like that or is it, you know, anybody else kind of good at getting pissy about stuff yeah letting your opinion be known I don't know anyone like that on Facebook mm. <laughs> very interesting so uh, I actually put together an entire tool that is still available to this day. It's actually my most popular download called uh, Sol Problem Solving in 10 Minutes. And it's actually about using your anger to get to a solution. So if anyone wants to check that out, you can actually go to um, uh, solveanyproblemnow.com and download that book. Dot com. Dot com. I can't believe I just did that voice actor and I said dot com. All right, so solveanyproblemnow.com. You can download that template and you can download the ebook that goes with um, that particular tool. And, and check it out because what I found over the years as a therapist and in through my own personal work is that what we're really aggravated about usually is um, hiding or masking or the uh, overriding emotion over something we're deeply committed about, right? So we wouldn't rant about it. We wouldn't get pissed off about it if it didn't mean something to us. Things that don't mean anything to us, we ignore. And they just kind of fades out of our attention. So if we, if we don't have any passion around it or any reaction to it, it tends to be something that's not super important to us. So it doesn't get that kind of attention. Um, I had the, the pleasure of meeting the wonderful Sherry English this weekend at this mastermind. And this incredible, incredible human being is, um, has been deep into the financial world and, and done high, high level work in the, in the financial markets for many years. And in a tra her own transition discovered that very little funding, like less something like less than 3% of investment funding is going to women or minority owned uh, businesses. So she in the said got pissed off. And in the course of two weeks, that momentum, along with the fact that she has high level contacts and she's very, very good at what she does, is now snowballing into a whole new project to serve uh, more people in getting investment funding and also serve investors and in finding those um, businesses that might be normally hidden from them. Um, so that should be a really interesting project. I'm looking forward to talking with her more about that and, and, and doing that. So guys, what is, what are you, uh, finding yourself pissed off about? What do you want to change? Um, what are some of the things that you want to see made a difference in? And are you actually pissed off enough to take some action about it? We can get very complacent. Um, because we do get overwhelmed. We have so much information coming at us from all directions. 
And that's why it's so important for us to be connected to our values. Um, and if you've never done a values assessment, I highly recommend uh, doing that. Dr. John Martini has a good one on his website. Um, you can always email me. I'll send you one myself. <laughs> uh, happy to do that. Because when you connect with your values, you can actually start to discern then where your time and energy is best spent, where your righteous indignation is best spent. So uh, that is what I want you to start thinking about today, especially as we're heading into the holidays. Uh, holidays are a time of high emotion for many, if not most people. Uh, our attention is, uh, you know, sometimes split thinking about, well, okay, I've got family over here that's uh, pulling demands on me. Am I doing the right thing? Am I... Um, Am I being the perfect mom? Am I being the perfect host? Am I, am I, am I doing enough? Am I romantic enough? Did I, am I going to buy the right gift? Well, she said I didn't have to buy her a gift. Does that mean I still have to buy her a gift? Yes, by the way. Um, a little insight there for you. Uh, or just, yes, buy the gift. Okay. Um, and so... That, those are some of the things that we get kind of pulled pulled in any direction around. So if you find yourself either feeling very flatline or you find yourself getting pissed off about everything, then that's a red flag in either direction that your focus and your values, you're not paying attention to where your values are really, are really pulling you, right? And this is a situation that I found myself in many times because I am a passionate person and I am a polymath. I'm in, involved in lots and lots of different things. But it really wasn't until, um, and <laughs> I feel like a little bit of a late bloomer about this, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I really had the life circumstances that kind of forced me almost to focus on a few things that I was really, really good at, that I was really, really passionate about, that I said, okay, well, if I focus on these things, can I then use that as fuel? It's not that, oh, uh, just because I'm doing audio production, I can never do acting again, or just because that I'm focusing on audiobooks and podcasting and business coaching kind of as a single focus package, that I'm never going to do, um, you know, retreats or anything again. But giving myself the time and space to get focused on that one area, this one section, then gave me the opportunity to communicate much more clearly out into the world what I was all about and my values and the transformation I wanted to offer people and the services and all of these other things. So, but it took me both having a set of uh, life circumstances that were slightly extreme to kick my ass into that, that level of focus. And it also took me getting pissed off enough at feeling like I was spinning my wheels or that I was you know, moving in too many directions at once or that I was feeling unknown, that I was feeling that, hey, you know, I've got all these great things to offer and people aren't taking advantage of it. It took all of those things for me to finally say, okay, hamster brain, we are now going to focus on this one area. So this is where, you know, a lot of people can learn from my mistakes on this. Um, if you give yourself the time and the energy and uh, the the focus to focus, your focus needs more focus. I think Jackie Chan said that in the remake of uh, The Karate Kid, your focus needs more focus. Um, if you give yourself the time and energy to, to actually do that and spend with yourself and say, okay, I'm pissed. I am seriously pissed about this. What is my underlying commitment? What is it that is so important to me about this that it keeps drawing my attention, that it keeps drawing my energy, keeps drawing me into Facebook arguments <laughs> or into a bunch of other things? Um, so that is where... I am going to ask you to be in an inquiry this week and uh, allow yourself to have that time and energy. I think I've said the word allow about 15 million times in this broadcast, so clearly that is the message I want you to take away. Allow, 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 allow. And even allow yourself to be pissed off. It's okay to be pissed off. you got to be responsible for it. Don't go out and vomit all over other people. But I'll give yourself the space to go, well, if I'm so pissed off, what am I pissed off about? And if you want a kind of a guided um, 
tool on that, you are more than welcome to go to solveanyproblemnow.com and download that ebook. Like I said, it's been my most popular download. I don't do anything with it. I actually put it up on a whim and I left it up because people started downloading it like, uh, like crazy. Um, so, and actually the follow-up email gives you another tool, which is called the perfect day exercise, which if some of you watching have ever done anyone who does the perfect day exercise, um, which is a neurologically, uh, tuned exercise to help you, um, bring your perfect day into reality. There's a whole video about that. If you want to go into it, uh, that tool actually is in that email thread as well. I don't overwhelm people with emails because we're busy. So whenever I send something out, you can trust that it's going to be something that has high value. I don't send anything out that I don't want to read myself. And while yes, I do love the sound of my own voice, I have limited time and energy to read my own stuff. So, um, I make that promise to you and that commitment. Um, to you. You'll allow it Christianly? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing that. I appreciate that. Uh, and I haven't responded to a lot of the comments that you guys have been making here, but I will as soon as I um, get off here, I will also make sure that I put the, the links that I mentioned in there, including the link uh, to Candy Barone's website. I recommend that if you are interested in this conversation about soul leadership and engaging deeper in um, how to become a better leader, how to become a deeper leader, how to inspire other people, how to make change in spite of or in favor of um, being pissed off about it. I recommend that you go to sayyesquiz.com, which is one of Candy's quizzes on leadership and your, and your uh, leadership ability and check that out and that's a really insightful quiz and um, she is good 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 people she is my purple squirrel sister and I would trust anybody um, uh, to send to her and have her you know take good care of you um, in your development of leadership so highly recommend all right, so I think that's all I want to talk about today, and uh, please leave your comments below and let me know if these Facebook Lives are valuable to, to you, if there's any topics that you want to uh, hear or see me talk about in the world of unleashing the voice, your voice, unleashing the voice of your business. Could be business topics, could be personal development topics, could be topics about uh, traveling and uh, living mobile. Um, uh, role reversal in, in long-term relationships. It's something that my husband and I have gone through several times now in our relationship. So anything that you want to, uh, topics that you want to hear about, you want to learn more about on a, a weekly nugget, let me know. And I want, want to make sure that everyone here uh, gets a lot out of these little um, things. So not as much humor today, guys. No puppets for you today. Uh, but... <laughs> Maybe another time. I'll bring on another one of my furry friends for you if you want. And we will see you next week. So this week, notice, what are you pissed off about? What's your underlying commitment? And when you notice that underlying commitment, are you inspired enough, pissed off enough to take an action to start to make change in that area? That's the inquiry for the week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.